Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and are you worried about injector deposits in your BMW? Well, a great way to avoid them is a catch can, and I want to show you how you can easily install one into your car. All right, y'all, so one of the most common complaints about direct injection motors is that you worry about your injectors on the inside getting clogged with carbon buildup over time. Now, the S55 motor in this BMW, BMW M4 doesn't have that problem nearly as much as, say, for example, some of the older generation motors like the N54, where it was very, very common, and you would have to get your injectors cleaned by, like, chemically or walnut blasting. Not a big deal, but it also wasn't cheap either. Now, one of the best ways you can avoid that is by adding a catch can to your car that sits in line and helps pull out a lot of that moisture, whether it's oil or other condensates, out of the injection loop that goes back into your motor. You, know, you empty this out every once in a while, and this ADDW1 can is a great way to do that. Now, I had an opportunity to install this, so I wanted to show you how you can do this really, really easily, and it's something that, that's peace of mind. Every once in a while, you go ahead and take the can off, empty it out, move on. And it helps cut down on those deposits that could be affecting your motor and, it, and potentially avoid long-term issues. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in the car and I'll show you how to do this. All right, guys, so the install on this really isn't all that hard, but there's a few components we need to take off first. So go ahead and take your vanity cover off. You just take this by, by pulling upwards and lifting it up and out. And it's, got, it's on little rubber feet that sometimes can stick down. So if you look at these posts and if you see one of these rubber feet stuck behind, um, just pull it off and go ahead, go ahead and put it back in your vanity cover. So you know, we also need to remove our plastic covers up here. Now, these are 10 millimeter quarter turn nuts. So you can go ahead and just take a socket or a wrench and quarter turn each one of those. Now, a couple of cautions here really quick. You've got a plastic rivet over here on this side that you're gonna pick the center pin out and then pull the rivet out. And you'll have one on each side as well. Now, also, as you can tell, you've got your positive battery post here too. So what I usually will do is I'll put a rubber glove or something similar over the top of that because as we move our carbon strut or you're moving tools around, you wouldn't wanna to touch that. That would be a huge drag, okay? So go ahead and take these plastic grips out, quarter turn these covers, take them both off, set them aside. Then we're gonna take our carbon strut bar off next. Okay, all right, so now we wanna take our carbon strut bar off. Now, always treat this with respect. This is not a cheap part, but it's easy to get off. What you'll have is you'll have 13 millimeter bolts, one, two, three, and one and two in the front. Now, here's the interesting thing to note. This is an M4 convertible, and in every F80 and F82 example I've ever seen, I've had two bolts back here instead of three. So this may be a feature of it being, of it being the M4 uh, Cabriolet, who knows? But you've got, in this case, three long bolts in the back on each side and two short here in the front. So go ahead and take all of those out. You also have a 10 millimeter bolt right here that attaches the reservoir to your carbon strut bar. So if you take all of those out, you can feed the strut bar out. Now what I usually will do is this rubber grommet on this side is pinned down. But if you take this and you lift on, lift on the left side and just feed it out of the right side, you don't have to worry about moving that rubber grommet or, or dealing with that at all. But take all these bolts out, make sure that the, that the short ones go back into the front when we put this back together, okay? But go ahead and take all those out and take your strut bar out next. All right, so let's take a closer look because I want to make sure you have a real clear picture of, of the work that we're doing because at times the camera angle can be a little bit tough. So let's get in here close. So what we're going to be replacing today is the crankcase breather hose right here. So this is where it comes up into the crankcase and is recycling exhaust gases back up through. And this is where, you know, oil condensates and other things come up through. So as you can see all the way down here, and I'll put my finger on it right here, you can see the bolt for it. So when I'm talking about this bolt here in just a second, at the bottom of the breather hose right here, you have a T20 bolt. So you're going to take that out and we're going to undo this clip right here at the top and then this hose comes off. The catch can is going to sit right here in between where it's going to have one hose that comes up from down below, goes into the catch can, comes back around and goes back into your crankcase right here. So you've got your catch can sitting in between and catching all those particulates. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Now if you have small hands and you can get a tool in here and get, it, get a T20 on this bolt right here, you can do this without removing your air box which is not hard, but to save time, if you don't have to remove it, you, you don't have to, which is great. If you do, you just press down on the clip right here and, and your MAF sensor cable will come off. You, uh, you just loosen the hose clamp right here and then you can back the collar off on this and the entire air box will come out and you can get to this much more easily. So you can do it either way, it just all, really all depends on space. 
So if we, if we can do this today without taking the airbox off to save time, we're going to, but if we skip ahead in a second and the airbox is gone, you'll understand why of what I've done. I've just taken this out, taking this out, depressing this collar, and then the whole airbox comes out. But the next step is going to be is backing off, not only down here at the bottom and taking this bolt out, don't drop it. So I'm gonna do that next. Then we're gonna back this collar off. I'll show you how we do that next. Okay, so as you can tell, I've got the top loose and you've really got to pull this collar back and get it to come loose. If this has never been off before, it can be really tight. So just be patient as you work at it. I've got the T20 out here, right here at the bottom. Now really hard to see, but right here at the bottom of this breather hose is a sensor plug-in that comes in right here. Now I can see it to my eye really easily. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but all you'd want to do is use a pick tool and lift the little catch lever on that plug. Lift it and then press that away because the plug comes up through a little horseshoe collar right here and is actually holding this hose in place. You can't take it out until that's unplugged, okay? So go ahead and, and undo that and drop that, that plug away and then your whole hose will be out and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right guys, so we have the crankcase breather hose out and it's really gonna be a few simple more steps and we'll have the catch can installed. Now, with the OEM hose here, the nice thing about this kit is that it comes with two new replacement hoses, which actually is replacing a weak spot in, in this design. Now, this particular hose, and I've pulled back a little bit of, of this neoprene style shielding to show you the hose. These corrugated ridges over time, as this pipe moves, can start to crack. And actually, you know what? If I move this a little bit, I can actually feel it crack just a little bit. So this hose can crack, which also will cause leaks and all kinds of other issues. So we're going to replace it, but we need to take the ends off this hose. It's really easy. All you need to do is take a heat gun, and if you don't have one, you can always use a hairdryer if, you, if that's what you need, but just use a heat gun, warm this up, and these ends will pop clean off, and we're gonna transfer them to the new hoses. So go ahead and take those off, and I'll show you the next step. All right, yeah, let me freehand the camera a little bit because I want to kind of show you all the different angles here. I've jumped forward a little bit because the assembly is so easy. I just want to kind of show you all together. Now, the can itself, uh, you've got all of these 2.5 millimeter little screws that go on the top and it allows you to put it at different angles to the mount arm. In this case, with this car, you want to take the two of the closest uh, screws, so you take both of those out. Now the mounting bracket itself, you've got 13 millimeter bolts here and here, the OEM bolts. Go ahead and take those out, mount the bracket in place, and put the supplied 13 millimeter bolts back in, and you can just put them in tight. You don't have to torque them down or do anything crazy. You take out these two 2.5 millimeter Allen bolts, and then you can mount your can. Now the can as well has these two inlet pipes with, with O-ring gaskets that go on the inside. So make sure that you put the O-rings on before you screw these into place. And then you can just take a wrench and just tighten these down snugly. So both of the inlets are set for the can itself. Okay, now, now that you've taken your breather hose off and you've taken the ends off, now what we need to do is we need to arrange to get the ends in the right location. So the shorter pipe is easy. The bend side goes on, on the crankcase side right here and the orientation of the, of the connection itself doesn't matter because it's all the same all the way around. But you do want to make sure your hose clamp is not in the way. So what I'll usually do is I'll slide my hose clamp up kind of loose, I'll move it around, it's in the, in the right location, then I'll tighten it down. And you can see where it's already positioned to fit into the can perfectly. Now with, with the longer hose, the, the bend is going to be at the top, at the can, the long straight section is going to be down below. And this takes a little bit of configuration to get it in the exact right angle. Now remember that sensor you had to unplug. That has to go straight down, and this flange is where that, where that T20 bolt goes. So when you set this in here, what I'll usually do is I'll just set the pipe into place without the hose clamp on. I'll just set the pipe into place, kind of manipulate it around, get it into the right location. I know my hand's right in the way right at the moment, but get it right in the right location where you can tell that the flange is gonna go in right, and it's all gonna go in right, just like that. And then you can set it in, you can see where the hose is gonna fit perfectly. So now this is all perfect. Then I'd slide my hose clamp down and I tighten my hose clamp so it's set and set perfectly. So now this hose is in the right place. So at this point you can see where the reassembly is coming back together very, very well. So go ahead and attach your can. So attach the mounting bracket, attach the can to it. Make sure your inlets are on with the O-rings. Go ahead and add the ends to your new pipes, which is really great. You're never gonna have a problem of that OEM breather hose ever breaking ever again with these pipes. You can see where these come up, okay? So I'm gonna get all these connected and then you can also, you can use hose clamps here, but or you can also get the matching because we have the blue accent. We've got the aluminum horseshoe collar style that goes here. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, but get caught all up to this point and then we're gonna connect the hoses. Then we're gonna be putting the car back together and we're gonna be done.
All right, so now you just uh, just slide the hoses up into place. If you've got the worm drive kind of hose clamps, I would have the worm drive on the outside and the outside both with the nut facing up so you can get to them easily if you need to in the future. If you have this horseshoe collar style, just slide it down the pipes a little bit, have it as loose as it'll go, pull those hoses up into place and then just slide it all the way up so it's in a good position. I've got a little bit of a gap right hose right there. So I'm gonna make sure that my hose slides up a little bit and it's nice and firmly into place once I crank that down. And that's again, a 2.5 millimeter Allen to tighten that down. So once that's done, you're pretty much done as far as the assembly is concerned. All we need to do now is just put, put the air box back on and the carbon strut bar back on, fire the car up, test it, and you'll be done. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and time to put the air box back in. So a couple of things here really quick. You can see where the fresh air intake is right here. There's a matching pipe that comes up underneath this bracket right here. So when you fit this down in, try to get this to collar down around that pipe. Also, you've got your intake pipe right here that's gonna wanna fight you when you put this back in. Just take one hand and press this back on this accordion section to make sure that this can fit in nicely. It's got two feet it fits down into. Don't press on this pipe too hard. You can break its plastic bracket off right here, which is not the end of the world. It's just a drag and it's, and you don't have to replace that pipe, so don't do it. Okay, so go ahead and fit this back into place. Go ahead and tighten uh, the uh, hose clamp once you pull this collar back up on. Plug your mouth sensor back in and then we're gonna put the strut bar back on. All right, so now it's just time to just reverse what you did to take it apart. The carbon strut bar will slide through this rubber gasket on this side, slide it in, lay it down here across the front, and then flip up this side, lay it down, and put this back down around it. Again, make sure not to touch a positive post if you haven't covered it. Just a quick reminder, the 13 millimeter go in front. Here, the short ones go in front, here and here. The three long ones, one, two, three, one, two, three, go in back, so go ahead and put all those in. Uh, it's 28 newton meters to torque them down. So go ahead and put those on. Don't forget your 10 millimeter nut right here for the reservoir. And then we'll put our plastics back on and we'll be all done. All right, so getting the plastic back on is really easy. Kind of take your glove off and put one there. This little teeth up there at the end, just fit it into the teeth. As you can see, just like that. Set it down into place, it'll kind of snap into place just like that. And then quarter turn those 10 millimeters, put your plastic rivet back in. Go ahead and do the other side, put your vanity cover back on, and you're all done. All right, so one quick last walkthrough. As you can see, everything's put to get back together. Looks really, really good. I really, I really like this uh, catch can. Again, what a cool feature with this dipstick right here, because as you can see, it's right here. You don't have to move anything. You just unscrew it when you, when you want to check it. That is a really neat feature. So... Checking your catch can is something you just want to do every once in a while. I usually do it about every oil change just to see how it's doing now, but with this dipstick, it makes it even easier. So what a cool feature. All right, also go ahead and clean up, put your tools away. Good job, you're all done. All right, y'all, so all wrapped up and done. Go ahead and clean, and put, clean up and put your tools away. And as you can tell, this is an easy project you can do at home. You only need a few simple tools, and I'll have all those things listed in the video description. But all in all, this is really simple, and this is a really cool catch can with a few, a few design elements I've not seen before. You know, you can customize it with a carbon fiber. You can add different colors if you want. And again, you've got that dipstick, which is really, really cool. So thank you, thank you so much to ADDW1 for making such a cool, uh, such a cool product. I've really uh, enjoyed working with it. I would highly recommend this for your car if you've got this type of car to, to cut down on those concerns on residue and buildup in your motor. Please make sure to click subscribe and the little alarm bell. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I'd really appreciate it. And I have a ton of content coming soon. I can't wait to bring it to you and I'll see you on my next video.